I invite you to stand as you're able and join with me in the call to worship. Welcome to you who call upon the name of Christ. We gather tonight to recall the story of the night Jesus was betrayed. Are you prepared to come to the feast of Jesus, the Christ, whose life was poured out for you? Are you able to watch with Jesus at prayer in the garden? Indeed, to struggle yourselves to be in unity with God's will for you. Then let us praise God, even in this hour of darkness. Greatly is your name to be praised in all the earth. Bring us to this feast of remembrance with open hearts.
You may be seated. Well, it's a great joy to be together tonight on this Holy Thursday, this Maundy Thursday evening. Uh, what a beautiful day it has been today, and what a fitting conclusion to this day to be with you all tonight uh, for this special Maundy Thursday service. I always remind folks at this time of the year, this service, that the word Maundy comes from a Latin word which means mandate, which reminds us on this night that Jesus gave a new mandate to his disciples that we're to love one another even as Christ has loved us. And tonight we remember in particular the suffering love of Christ and we're so grateful that you've chosen to be with us. I do want to remind you that tomorrow night uh, we're going to have a Stations of the Cross kind of music event here in the sanctuary at 7 p.m. that you won't want to miss for our Good Friday service. Uh, our chancel choir will be presenting special music and we'll hear readings from the Passion and we look forward to tomorrow night as well. And then many of you have been here during the week uh, in our Stations of the Cross in Haney Hall. Uh, it will be open tomorrow all day and we'll also have an outdoor Stations of the Cross and it's going to be another beautiful day tomorrow and we hope that you'll join us for that at any time uh, tomorrow uh, during the, the, the hours of 8 to five, and then for the service tomorrow evening at seven. Um, great, we're grateful to have our superintendent with us here tonight. Doc, Dr. Vonna Wilson is with us, and it always means a lot to have her. And our preacher tonight uh, is no stranger to us, Bishop Joe Pennell. Uh, most of you know, and some of you were here when he was the senior pastor from 1988 to 1996. And then, unfortunately for you and for him, he was elected bishop in 1996. So you lost your pastor, uh, but the Virginia Conference gained a great bishop. And he and Janine have come to mean a great deal to us in their retirement here as our bishop in residence. And Joe, we're so grateful to have you tonight. Uh, we appreciate the word that you're going to share with us. And we always appreciate our youth choir. We really appreciate James, Patsy, uh, Greg, and our youth choir tonight. Uh, for your special music.
I invite you to stand as you're able for the scripture lesson this evening. It comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, verses 14 through 27. When the hour came, he took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined, but woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another which one of them it could be who would do this. A dispute also arose among them as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But he said to them, the kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors, but not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest and the leader like one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. This is the word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. Well, it's a... uh special blessing for me to worship with you tonight, to study the Word, to hear the message, and to share it on this Monday, Thursday. Let us pray. We thank you for this gathering of believers. We thank you for the message of the music for the reading of Scripture. Be with us now as this word is proclaimed. Help us to receive it in our minds and hearts and help us to live as forgiven people. Amen. If you read the Bible from cover to cover, you will see that the Bible is filled with stories about people who messed up. You will see that it's filled with stories about nations that messed up. A lot of scripture calls that to our attention. We see an example of this when Jesus had the Last Supper with his disciples. We see how the disciples messed up. The twelve disciples went with Jesus to Jerusalem to remember the Passover. It was a tradition for Jewish people in that day to meet to remember the Passover. At this particular time, Jesus knew that his time had come. And he probably knew that this was his last meal. So 
So they went to the home of an, of an individual who let them use an upper room in his house. And Jesus and the twelve disciples went to that upper room. The disciples had been with Jesus for a long time. They had saw him heal people. They had watched him offer forgiveness. They heard him as he taught the parables. They even slept under the stars with him. They knew him. They were connected to him. Yet, these very disciples messed up. Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Peter denied Jesus. They even argued with themselves while they sat at the meal about who would be the greatest in the kingdom of God. They were more concerned about who was going to be on the top than they were the meaning of the event. And the disciples messed up again in that they did not go to the cross when Jesus was crucified. But in spite of their betrayals, and in spite of messing up as they did, Jesus still gave them the bread and the cup. He did not argue with them. He gave them the bread and the cup and said, do this in remembrance of me. He forgave them. Janine and I have been married 62 years. And when we got married, we were serving a church over in Chester County in a little town called Enville. Janine taught at Jones Elementary School. I was at Vanderbilt Divinity School. And every Friday afternoon, we would drive to Enville and we'd be there Friday night and Saturday and Sunday. Then we'd drive back to Nashville. She would go teach and I would go to Divinity School. It was a wonderful church, small, small in number but large in spirit. There was a man in that community who was called Mr. Bob. If you would ask anybody in Enville who is one of the nicest people in this community, they would tell you Mr. Bob. That's what they called him. But I noticed on communion Sundays, Mr. Bob never came to partake of communion. He always sat on the back row right next to the aisle, but he never came. And one day I was with him and I said, Bob, why don't you ever come and take communion? And he said, because I'm not good enough, that's why I don't come. He said, it's just a bunch of hypocrites that go and take communion. But I know that I'm not good enough. And then one Sunday morning, Corny Kent, that was his real name, Corny, Corny Kent. Corny got up out of his seat and went back to where Bob was sitting. And I saw Corny whisper something in Bob's ear. And Bob got up and came to communion. 
in that little church, there was a habit of standing around out in the churchyard after service to have conversation with each other. And as we were standing in the churchyard, I went over to him and I said, Bob, I'm so pleased you came to take the sacrament this morning. I said, why did you change your mind? Why did you come? And Bob said, it was because of what Corny said to me. And I said, what did he say? And he said, Corny leaned over and whispered in my ear and said, you can go, Bob, because it is for sinners. And Bob came. Tonight, many of us have messed up. We have not lived by what love requires. We have not lived by what justice requires. We've had our hands so full of ourselves that we haven't paid attention to the needs of others. And yet tonight, the bread and the cup will be offered to us as a sign of forgiveness. So tonight, let us repent. Let us believe and let us go forth living as forgiven people. Let us go forth as people who have partaken of these consecrated elements and let us live as if we've been forgiven. In a few minutes, the pyramids will be stripped Everything in the chancel will be gone, and only the cross will remain. The cross pointing up to God and outward to others, symbolizing that we're to live lives that point to the ultimate and at the same time reach out to others. As forgiven people, we can do that. Amen. This is a particularly special night. We take communion regularly here, but tonight's different. And it's different because this is as close as we come to being in the room. To see the scandal of a master stripping down and kneeling down and and washing the, the feet of his disciples. Feeling the heartbreak of a betrayal by someone you loved dearly. The humiliation of an ignominious arrest Tonight, we invite you to be fully present in the room. Hear the voices, smell the smells. We also remind you that this is not the Methodist table, especially tonight. 
This table is for sinners and hypocrites, all of us. The good news is the table's been set and you have a place at it, no matter who you are or what's brought you here tonight. It is a tradition of ours to receive an offering for communion. We'll use those gifts tonight to further the ministry and mission of this congregation. And so we ask you to consider making a gift. We invite you to join with us now as we enter into the great Thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. From the earth you bring forth bread and create the fruit of the vine. You formed us in your image delivered us from captivity and made covenant to be our sovereign God. You fed us manna in the wilderness and gave grapes as evidence of the promised land. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. When we had turned aside from your way and abused your gifts, you gave us in him for crowning, a crowning gift, emptying himself that our joy might be full. He fed the hungry, healed the sick, ate with the scorned and forgotten, washed his disciples' feet, and gave a holy meal as a pledge of his abiding presence. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water in the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Would you join together with us as we pray the prayer Jesus taught us? Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. After Jim and I have served one another, we're going to invite our servers to come forward. And we'll use, as is our custom, the method of intention. Uh, the server will share the bread with you and will ask that you dip it into the cup and receive God's grace in this way. We do have a gluten-free station next to the baptismal font. If that's a neat need for you, we're pleased to meet that need as well. And we also invite those of you online, if you have your cup and bread, to join with us tonight, and you will complete our service together as you join us here in person as you are online. Uh, as Jim has reminded you, this is the Lord's table, has nothing to do with denominations that has to do with the kingdom. And tonight you're invited to come and receive God's grace and mercy.
to be served where you're seated. Please lift your hand. It will be our privilege to serve you.
centuries ago, it became a tradition of the church to include on Maundy Thursday the stripping of the sanctuary. After the Passover meal, Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane where he was arrested and subsequently crucified on Friday. The stripping of the altar symbolizes the stripping away of Jesus' dignity as he was betrayed and abandoned and led to his death. During this ritual, the ornaments, linens, paraments, they're all removed from the chancel area. And this act reflects the desolation that followed Jesus' arrest, trial, and crucifixion. And the bare altar represents the emptiness and the abandonment experienced by Jesus during the Passion. Let me invite you as you're able to stand and hear these verses of scripture. After saying this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, very truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. Jesus answered, it is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. So when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. After he received the piece of bread, Satan entered into him. And Jesus said to Judas, do quickly what you're going to do. And so after receiving the piece of bread, he immediately went out and it was night. This is the word of God for the people of God. <laughs> 